Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is April 30th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see our low pressure system is right off the coast of Astoria. This brought some thunderstorm activity across the region yesterday. I'll show you more on that here in a moment. But we want to take a look at the extended forecast also, because we have additional storm systems moving through here and cool troughing uh, that we're going to be dealing with over the next few days. And we'll look at that here as we go through the video this morning, taking a look at yesterday. So I'm going to close this out here, and we're going to scroll through this one step at a time and you can see some of the lightning activity down to the south and east of Tacoma towards Puyallup out there and you can see there was a lightning strike just north of Seattle let's see when that one pops up or did I already there it goes right about there and yeah so uh, you probably heard a couple crashes of thunder out there for some select few people and check out across eastern Washington Idaho Panhandle as well M much more prolific lightning producers here across some of the southeast Washington and just north of Spokane across the Idaho Panhandle as well and if we scroll into the overnight hours here, watch this. You'll see a couple more lightning strikes here across southwest BC, a couple off the Washington coastline here in the overnight hours here. So some lucky souls may have uh, witnessed some of that activity. And as we go through the day today, what you're going to see is that low pressure center spinning here. And there was a couple lightning strikes associated with that cell right here across the south. You can see it right there, southwest BC. So there is a chance of a thunderstorm here still across western Washington today. And we'll take a look what the SPC has to say about that and what the models have to say as well and taking a look at portland oregon you can see the winter weather advisory will be wrapping up this evening here there'd be portland right there and there's the oregon coastline and this is medford watch out freeze warning is in effect it does include places like cave junction out there and grants pass now chilly morning lows also east of the cascades the eastern washington this was issued yesterday morning but it still goes on in through wednesday morning so heads up for that protect your pets and sensitive plants and this is the spc so this is pendleton oregon you can see it just includes olympia but not quite Tacoma there. Ellensburg, Moses Lake can't completely rot a thunderstorm again, eastern Washington, eastern Oregon, and maybe even for western Oregon today. Now, taking a look at what's going on in the upper levels of the atmosphere, 18,000 feet. This is what's driving that surface low right now. And you can kind of see the troughing hangs on as we go through Thursday morning. We start to bounce back a little bit here, kind of a transient ridge before the next deep trough starts to roll in here. And you can see it move right onto the coastline of Washington, Oregon. And there's some model disagreement on just where this is going to set up and how far south this is going to dive. As you know, if these dive a bit further south, it can leave some of BC and Washington a bit more high and dry and impact more of Oregon and California. So we'll see how that goes over the next couple of days. More on that here in a moment. And you can kind of see the continuation of this troughing here as we go through the weekend on and through early next week. Now, wider look at things here. We're going to go out a little bit further and you can see that troughing again that we're dealing with now and it kind of hangs on here through the day Thursday. Transient ridge, then another deep trough right for the West Coast here. And then we bring some continued troughing as we go through early May and kind of spin in. Gulf of Alaska gets active. But look at this. And we start to build a ridge here as we go through what, May 9th or 10th. We'll see about that. You know, that's a ways out there when you're looking at a forecast and then you can see the next system swinging through there and uh, transient ridges and troughs moving across the region so maybe we'll get some spring weather here as we go through the early portion of may and now take a look at total snow in inches. So this is what's going on this morning. That's why the winter weather advisors are up for some of the South Washington Cascades and the Oregon Cascades. You can see some snow piling up across the Rocky Mountains here as we go through Wednesday morning. Check it out, Alberta getting a nice round of snow, some of the Rocky Mountains of Idaho, Montana. And as we scroll off into the extended a little bit more, you can see with that cool troughing around, we could drop some additional snowfall here for the Rockies, BC, the Washington Cascades, and maybe even California. We'll get some snow, Eastern Oregon as well. Look at the upper elevations of Idaho, nice, uh, you know, not, not bad there for looking out 10 days. You know, we'll take what we can get as we're going through early May here. Taking a look at the daily two meter max temperatures here. So this is for today, you know, kind of suppressed temperatures out there. We bounce back a little bit tomorrow, Thursday, a little bit warmer, and then maybe peaking here on Friday. Look at Seattle and Southwest BC, maybe getting up into the mid and upper 60s here, some 70s and mid 70s for Eastern Washington, Oregon. You can see how the valleys warm up the Okanagan River Valley here this time of year, the Fraser River Valley as well. And of course, chillier across the mountainous areas. But watch what happens as we roll on into Saturday here and we bring that next system in here and we start to cool things down again and we're going to be below average here probably as we go through this weekend and on in through next week as well. You can see not much of a bounce back there, maybe as we go through the end, at the end of next week, but that's looking a ways out into the future. Now, looking at what the Doppler radar may look like as we go through the day today, 
Here we go. So we've got some shower activity and it's going to favor some of Southwest Washington and Oregon. And you cannot rule out lightning strike activity with this. And as we scroll on into the afternoon, check it out. Look at the storm that pops up right by Olympia there. Kind of gets a little bit robust. Maybe we'll kick off a lightning strike somewhere in this area as we go through the evening hours. And you can kind of see that continuation of some of this precipitation. I'm backing up now and you could get some thunderstorm activity with this across eastern Washington and eastern Oregon as we go on in through uh, the afternoon and evening hours. Then we go on into uh, this about Wednesday afternoon we're looking at right here and you can see the cloud shield and the precipitation from the next storm system approaching and then you see how this is kind of diving a little bit further south than it was showing yesterday so again something to watch as we go through Wednesday night into Thursday where is that system going to set up here and you know just exactly how long is it going to hang out if we take a look at the winds, just kind of showing you that surface low that we're dealing with right now as we speak. You saw that on the visible satellite imagery here. And the winds are going to turn northerly during the day today across places like the Puget Sound. It'll simply southerly as we go through the day today across the Willamette Valley as the slow is going to trek across the interior areas here. You can see a decent westerly surge coming down the Strait of Juan de Fuca as we go through tonight. And you know, some gusty winds for the east slopes of the Cascades of Washington and Oregon also. And then the next system starts rolling in here. And again, some differences in models and just exactly where this is going to set up. You can kind of see the spin in the atmosphere at the low pressure center right off the Oregon coast here as we go through Thursday morning. Now let's take a look at the thunderstorm outlook again. We saw that one already. There's day two. This threat pushes off towards Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming uh, for day two. And then again, maybe a chance here for eastern Oregon, Idaho, and Montana as we go on into this would be Thursday. Now taking a look at SeaTac, so we did miss, I, I think, you know, I'm not sure exactly how much precipitation we missed here, but we did miss a couple days there. So we probably are up over an inch of precipitation here, and this is for, yeah, SeaTac. So 23 hundredths of an inch of rain yesterday officially recorded, and we've got one more uh, day here. But, you know, it's not quite as bad as it looks, but we're still well below normal for the month of April. We're also well below normal temperatures. Look at that 57.8. The average is 59.3, so it has been cooler than normal and the overnight lows have been cooler than normal as well. And this is the Seattle National Weather Service forecast office there up towards Lake Washington. And you can see that they've got about 2.4 inches of rain there. So they're closer to normal and they did pick up 68 hundredths of an inch there yesterday. Pretty rainy day as some of those showers trained over that area. Actually, it looks like it set the precipitation record for the day here. It hasn't been keeping records here for long at the station, but that, that is noteworthy. And if you want a nice, affordable home weather station, click on that link down below. This thing is a haptic rain gauge, ultrasonic anemometer. It's got a great smartphone app and stores all the data for you in the cloud. It's also got a lightning detection system with it, which is pretty fun to watch when you got storms rolling around. Now, looking at total precipitation in inches, this is the National Blend of Models. There goes our system diving down across Oregon today, southwest Washington. And then the next storm rolls in here, and it, you can see it kind of has its eyes on Oregon, maybe southwest Washington, but some decent amounts across the Cascades and the coastal ranges as well. And kind of leaving Seattle a little bit more high and dry as well as southwest BC. But then we've got additional troughing that's going to be hanging out as we go on into the extended forecast. So we could still have some decent precipitation amounts as we move on through early May before we get a chance to warm up and dry out a bit. Now looking at Seattle, you can see probably Friday the nicest day, maybe a little bit above average here, but then that next trough rolls in here and some below average temperatures showing up. I mean, you're talking almost 10 degrees below normal for this time of year, and this is also the, the lows here, and the blue line is the average low for this time of year as well. Uh, this is Salem. You can see hovering below normal temperatures all the way through the end of next week, and again, we'll be watching that day by day and see how that trends. Here goes Pasco, Washington, also well below normal here. You know, some cases 15 degrees below normal for this time of year. No dust devil chasing early in the season for me yet. I have to wait for things to dry out and things to warm up before I can get out there and start to chase some dust devils. Here's Yakima, also below average, which is not a bad thing, though, when you're trying to plant crops out there. You guys know how important agriculture is to that area if you've lived out there or been out there and visited. And here's Yakima. Check it out as we go through about May 4th and 5th. It's actually showing a decent signal for some precipitation out towards the Yakima Valley. So this would be very beneficial, of course. A lot of the ensembles do have that precipitation, and the mean is about six or eight tenths of an inch there. Now, looking at six to 10 day temperature outlook, you can see the West Coast here below normal as we go through May 9th. And this is the above average signal here as we're dealing, uh, you know, through May 5th through 9th here. And this was issued yesterday. 
So here's the monthly temperature outlook. This was issued about 12 days ago now, but I just want to show it and just kind of remind you what the prediction was for May. You can clearly see the above normal signal here across a lot of the Pacific Northwest and the below normal signal here for some northern portions. And I've been showing this, you know, the, here's our drought monitor. I just wanted to kind of point out that there is one for the Canada as well. And you can see there is some extreme and exceptional drought across British Columbian portions of Alberta. There's a lot of severe drought and a lot of moderate drought out, out here as well including some of the coastal areas dealing with severe drought. And if you guys know, or if you don't, the, a lot of these fires down here, sometimes we get the setups where we get the north or the northeast winds that can really introduce smoke into the Seattle and Portland metro, Spokane, and southwest BC here. So it does matter what is going on here across British Columbia. It has huge impacts on you know smoke coverage here across the Pacific Northwest as we get into the summer months here. So um, yeah, this it will be something I'll be paying attention to as we go, because uh, as we know, we had a huge fire season last year and we were kind of lucky with the prevailing winds, not bringing a lot of that smoke into the region. But that is not always the case. Some years we can get it really bad from the forest fires ongoing across British Columbia and even Alberta at times. And they actually do a complete discussion there as well. If you want to check that out, go ahead and go to the current drought conditions for the government of Canada. But yeah, anyway, eyes on the sky today, especially across Oregon out there, maybe Olympia, Tacoma, you might see that shower that I showed you in the North American model roll through there and you could get a lightning strike or two out of that as well. Uh, but anyway, yep, hope you guys are having a good day. We'll do this again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.